Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us today for our on-demand tech talk series for our IT operations products. And what we're going to discuss is how to unlock the power of custom entity types for efficient monitoring of your critical services. My name is Thomas Booth, and I'm the technical interlock director for our IT operations product portfolio. And I'll be joined in a demo video by Jeff Wiedemann, one of our principal strategists here at Splunk. So for a quick agenda, we're going to talk about what our solutions were before IT Essentials, uh, ITSI, and the custom entity type for our basics of infrastructure and host monitoring. And then we're going to talk about the why and how we're migrating from those legacy apps to this solution built on entity types. And then Jeff's going to present a demo where he shows how you can build your own custom entity types to extend the, in, the impact of these solutions. So before, our customers on the left-hand side of the screen achieved tremendous value for host, basic host monitoring with our legacy apps for infrastructure, Splunk app for infrastructure, Windows app for infrastructure, AWS app for infrastructure, et cetera. The problem was, as we were trying to help them mature towards services monitoring, which would be both, which would be all of your infrastructure, user behavior, and application performance, the value they realized with those legacy apps couldn't come with them to ITSI. Now, ITSI is a product we're very proud of, and it's going to be in our portfolio for the foreseeable future, and we're even migrating incident intelligence into our observability cloud, but they were essentially stuck, and we understood why it would be a very tough decision for them to make to make that leap to a separate product and start over from scratch on their host or basic infrastructure monitoring. So what we've done is build a bridge with our IT Essentials portfolio. When I say IT Essentials, what I'm really talking about for this purpose is the infrastructure overview tab of IT service intelligence. And that's because IT Essentials is built on ITSI's code base and it's just a feature flagged version. And the infrastructure overview with custom entity types is really how to extend the, the power of that product. And as you mature from basic host monitoring, infrastructure monitoring, to services monitoring with application and user experience, we're gonna start delivering you out of the box content through the form of content packs. Now Splunk app for content packs is available for download today. It's generally supported. And this is designed to give you a complete monitoring experience with those ITSI premium features such as glass tables, but we can still ship you out of the box content in the form of entity types. So. Why did we do this? Those legacy apps were fairly popular. The answer is one that most are familiar with, tech debt. Every time there's an update to our core product, Splunk Enterprise, our IT operations team spent a considerable amount of time just keeping these up to date, which prevented us from innovating. So by making this move, we have more capacity to continue to prov provide that out of the box content I just mentioned in Splunk app for content packs. But why was it a challenge? This slide represents trying to migrate those apps, six or more, that were built by different teams at different times with different user interfaces and experiences into one. And our product team did a fantastic job in building entity types. So I'm not going to steal too much of Jeff's thunder here, but what I'm showing is that infrastructure overview tab of IT Essentials work. If you had ITSI in the upper right-hand corner, that logo would change. And each of these cards represents an entity type. And it's organized by a key metric. There you can see distributed by average CPU usage, et cetera. And this is a snapshot and an ability to view all of your infrastructure, whether it be AWS EC2s or GCP compute engines or you know, Windows. And you can assign those entity types to different services they're providing, whether those Windows devices are your Active Directory or Domain Controller, IIS, et cetera. You can really take a logically correlated group of machines and provide oh, like a quick snapshot of what they're doing for your environment. Again, I don't want to steal any Jeff's thunder. So with that, let's just get to the demo video and uh, let him explain for himself. One of the great things about IT Essentials work is the ability to create entity types. You can think of an entity type as a logically related group of machines that are all doing the same thing. So for instance, I can have an entity type for all my Windows servers or all my Linux servers. I might also have an entity type for all my web servers or all my database servers. 
IT Essentials work comes uh, pre-built with several different entity types. And we're gonna look through one of those today to get comfortable with the configuration. But the power really comes when you define your own custom entity types to extend the platform. And so we're gonna focus on how you build custom entity types to extend IT Essentials work. So before we do that, let's look at one of the pre-built entity types. Uh, in this environment, I have quite a few different Linux servers. And so to see the different entity types that I have built and what entities are associated with them, I drop my group by down and select entity type. At this point, we're gonna load all of the different entity types that are built in the system and show you how many entities we found for each one. In this case, I have eight Linux servers in the environment. And then when I click on the entity type, I'm shown a list of all eight of those uh, Linux servers in my environment. Now you access the entity type configuration uh, via the configuration tab. So we'll click configure and entities. And the entity type tab is gonna list all of the entity types built in the environment. Now, as I said before, IT Essentials work ships with several of these out of the box, and we have some custom ones built in the environment as well. We're going to go build another custom one. But before we do that, let's look at that Nix entity type configuration and show you where the configuration manifests itself in the UI. So we'll walk through each of these configurations really quickly. The first is basically the entity name. And so that is going to show over here in the entity type, right? So if I click my back button and I see all of the different entity types in the environment, it's that entity type name that's being listed here. Next are the vital metrics. So you can think of vital metrics as a set of Splunk searches. These could be metrics-based searches or they could be event-based searches that basically surface up the most important indicators of the health of that particular entity. With these things being basic Unix and Linux hosts, we're showing you average CPU usage, memory free, disk free, and network traffic. Additionally, we select one of these as the key metric. So flipping back over, you'll notice that the vital metrics show up at the top. This is the average of all of those uh, Linux and Unix hosts in the environment. And then as we list each specific Linux and Unix host off, the vital metrics and their current values for each host are listed right here. After the vital metrics come several navigation, uh, uh, navigation configurations. So the navigation suggestion and the Splunk dashboards are very similar. Um, let's start with the navigation suggestions. Let's go ahead and click into one of these hosts and we'll show you where the remaining configurations surface up. So we're now looking at the information very specific to my very first MySQL server. The entity information flyout may default open and if it doesn't, it's accessible with this little tree icon right here. So we'll click that and we'll fly open the entity flyout. And we can see here that this MySQL 01 server is identified as being a Nix server, and it's also identified as being a VMware VM. So the navigation suggestions is right here, okay? And so as I build these uh, navigation suggestions in my entity type, I will be uh, presented with you know, guided detail on where to navigate next. Similarly, the dashboards show right here. And so I have a Nix overview dashboard and a VMware overview dashboard because of the Splunk dashboards configurations section. And finally, the analysis data filters is going to allow me to see exactly the right logs and metrics associated with this particular host inside of my analytics workspace. And so I'll extend my metrics and see that the metrics that are presented here that I can use to uh, analyze and see what's going on with the system are very specific to this uh, host and the metrics flowing in for it. And similarly, the events that are surfacing up uh, are uh, very specific to this host 
and they are filtered down to just the metrics and events that I build here inside of my analysis data filters. So with all that uh, information, let's go ahead and build a new custom entity type for our MySQL database servers. Okay, so to get started building a custom entity type, we're gonna return back to the entity type configuration screen and click create entity type. That's gonna bring up this dialogue where I have already gotten started building some of my entity type configuration for my MySQL servers. For the entity type name, we'll just call it MySQL server, that's easy. And then I've done two vital metrics. Because this is a database server, the first vital metric, we'll call it disk uh, free. Okay. So a couple things that are important about the vital metrics SPL. First of all, you need to ensure that your uh, result value has the name val. So in this case, we're looking ultimately at the disk space metric but we are aliasing it as the word val. That is what ITE Learn is expecting for the value of the metric. Now here, I've done a little bit of lazy wildcarding for the specific metric that I'm looking for, but obviously what you would do is specify the correct index name where, wherever your metric lives and select the correct metric name for what you're wanting to run your, um, your uh, vital metric off of, and then any additional filtering. So for instance, let's say that uh, we only wanted to look at one of our mount points or one of our disks because that's where the database data was stored. We could add that into our metric where clause as well. Afterwards, the last thing we wanna do with an mstats command is we want to uh, use our by clause. And most times we want to do by host and specify a span time frame of one minute, okay? To see this working, go ahead and click run search and you should see results here. If you get errors or anything that indicates that this is not structured correctly, please carefully revisit your SPL. Make sure you're aliasing your um, metric as val. And then in terms of your by clause here, you typically only want two things. You typically want to split by host and you wanna apply that uh, one minute span option to your mstats command. And as long as you do that correctly, um, you're gonna see good results. For entity matching filters, you wanna uh, match the host from the data set with the host from your entity uh, alias, okay? And if all of this works correctly and you click save, uh, that should be good. Then we're gonna show you what uh, this particular example here is a example where we have uh, my SQL errors, right? So we're looking at the, uh, uh, now technically this is just log events, but that's fine. So once again, um, you can do an event-based search here, uh, but if you do an event-based search, there's a few things that you should consider. One is uh, I've gotten lazy again and I did index equals star. Um, specify only the indexes that you want to run your vital metric against and only the source or source types. In this case, I'm looking at the uh, MySQL um, uh, sources. And then you have to do a bin uh, on time and do a one minute span. And then again, do a stats clause here. So this is gonna look somewhat similar to your mstats command. So stats count as val by under time and host. Go ahead and run that search. Hopefully you get some results. Once again, if you get errors here, double check. This should be uh, pretty close to the structure you use. You have to have your metric value has to be called val and you wanna have uh, basically time and one additional field, typically host. So we'll set host as host and we'll save that. All right. And then finally we'll select as our key metric disk free and we'll hit save. Let's go back now into that entity type that we have just built. Here it is. And we'll kind of look at the rest of the configuration. So if I do edit, 
Let's go down to the navigations and take a look at those. I've added one navigation in here, which is in this case, uh, navigation to uh, MySQL online documentation. Uh, maybe this is something I like to consult during investigations. Uh, and so I've gone and added that. Now, we can also add a second navigation. And this could be a link to a custom Splunk dashboard that you've created, okay? And you're gonna pass in the, you know, uh, URL of the dashboard that you created, any parameters that you wanna pass to that dashboard for filtering purposes, you can build those out there and save that navigation and everything should work. Okay. And then finally for analysis data filters, uh, we'll just keep this very simple. We'll do my SQL logs and we'll have that be an event-based search with a static filter of source is star my SQL star. We'll save that filter group. Okay, just like that, we have created our custom entity type for MySQL servers. The last thing we need to do is we need to find the SQL servers in the environment and we need to associate them with the entity type that we've just collect, that we've just created. So I found my four MySQL servers. I checked uh, all four of them. And then under bulk actions, and I, I did this quickly, so let me go back here. This is under the entities tab, right? So this is all the entities that we have in the environment. I searched for my four MySQL servers. And then for a bulk action, I add all four of these to the MySQL servers entity type. Okay. Now, Let's look at this in action. Returning back to the infrastructure view, if I do group by entity type, we now have a new card for the entity type that we've just created, MySQL servers. The vital metric, in this case, we chose disk free. That's what's showing up here in the card, okay? So we have one host that has a disk free from zero to 10. And then we have th uh, three more hosts with, that have disk free from uh, 20 to 30. If we click in to that grouping, we see all four of our SQL servers, okay? And then we also see the disk free uh, uh, values for each of them. And I may not have any SQL errors over the course of the last 60 minutes. So let's extend this a little bit further. Otherwise I might've just gotten my SPL wrong. Looks like I got my SPL wrong. Um, <clears throat> and then finally, when we click in to one of these servers and we expand our entity uh, flyout, you'll notice that it is now associated with that third entity type, MySQL servers. And here now we have our navigation suggestions where we can be taken directly out to, in this case, MySQL online documentation. Um, or again, we can have this link to custom dashboards that we have built where we're going to look uh, at more detail uh, of this particular SQL server. Going over into the analytics workspace, we have metrics and events all filtered correctly by that particular uh, server. And we can go and search those and do all sorts of fun analytics, okay? And that's it. That is how you create a custom entity type in IT Essentials work. All right, thanks, Jeff. That was amazing as usual. And for everyone here, uh, we'd like to make sure that you have some additional resources to continue learning more about custom entity types and extending the power of Splunk for your IT operations solutions.
Thanks and have a great day.